So I'm back on another one of my serious horror movie kicks right now, so I thought what better time than today to go over, in my opinion, some of the best horror movies you've never seen before. Now there's a few on here that you've probably heard of and maybe even watched, but judging off the amount of ratings on apps like Letterboxd and IMDb, I think way more horror fans need to know about them. And remember, this is just my list. If you think there's one I should add or leave out, I'm always open to hearing opinions. So before we get into this one, I want to hear from you guys. What's a horror movie you think more people need to know about? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If this is something you guys like, we can definitely do more lists like this in the future. The first movie I want to talk about is Rent-A-Pal. Rent-A-Pal is essentially about David, a lonely middle-aged man in the 90s who lives in his sick mother's basement so he can take care of her. While trying out a video dating service, he finds this weird tape called Rent-A-Pal in a bin, so he buys it because he's a little bit curious about it. When he plays the tape, it features a host named Andy who speaks to whoever's watching and leaves pauses to allow them to simulate a conversation. We've all used tapes like that before, right? Nothing pathetic about that. But it seems like this videotape knows a lot more than it should as time goes on. This is one that isn't very action heavy, it's much more of a twisted slow burn that picks up pace over time until it reaches its conclusion. But what this one's got going for it is that the performances are awesome and the concept is super unique. You know a horror movie is solid when it makes you feel something aside from all of the thrills and the gore, and I genuinely found myself feeling bad and sympathizing for David throughout the entirety of the film. You can see how badly he wants to connect with someone and accidentally just gets caught up in this twisted situation. So if you like more of that slow burn, dialogue heavy horror stuff, you'll probably enjoy this one. Next one on the list is Sputnik. This is a Russian horror movie about a young doctor who's hired by the Soviet military to assess an astronaut who survived some strange space accident, but when he returns to Earth, he has some sort of organism living inside of him. Now, if you're into movies like Alien and Life and all that creepy face hugger stuff, there's definitely something here for you. I was pretty surprised with how much I enjoyed this one after deciding to watch it on a whim without really hearing much about it. The performances are solid, there's a lot of gory action scenes, and I really enjoyed the alien creature design in here. We've seen this alien parasite human host storyline before though, and in much more iconic horror films than this one, but there are enough subtle differences in devices so it stands on its own two feet and doesn't feel like a simple retread. Sometimes the general plot beats and the structure overall can get a little bit cliche, but the good definitely outweighs the bad in this one. If you're somebody who especially likes your horror with a side of science fiction, then this one might be for you. The next movie on the list is Pontypool. This one follows a disc jockey named Grant Mazzy who runs a radio station out of his basement in the Canadian town of Pontypool. And one day while he's at work, he starts hearing reports of a virus that's turning people into zombies. So he barricades himself inside of his booth and tries to find a way to warn his listeners about what's transpiring. But the catch here is that the virus has a very unlikely mode of transmission, which I'm not going to spoil and talk much about because the film does such a beautiful job of slowly revealing and exposing what's really going on here. Zombie movies were a dime a dozen in the mid 2000s. You couldn't go to a movie theater without something zombie oriented playing. But it's exactly that reason that Pontypool separates itself from the pack. It took took a risk and brought a very different concept to the zombie mythos, and it really worked. Obviously, zombies are a very central component of this story, but it's equal parts closed room situational thriller as well, and they picked the perfect type of character to give us the perspective of during this outbreak. Try to go into this one as blind as you can to have the most effective experience with it you'll be glad that you did. Next up is The Collector. This one's about a down and out former convict who works as a handyman for a wealthy family and he decides to rob their house when they go on vacation so that he can pay off some of his debts. But once he gets inside, he finds out they actually didn't leave after all and that someone with far more sinister intentions than himself has already broken in. This one has gore and traps out the wazoo if that's your bread and butter. The movie was actually shopped around as a Saw prequel for 
for a long time before it got reworked into its own standalone story. And I think it actually puts some of the later Saw entries to shame when it comes to the creative traps and the gore. There is a lot of gore in this movie. I've always had a soft spot for this one though and think it's a lot of fun if you enjoy the subgenre. It flips the tired storyline of terrorizing a family inside their own home on its head by including this burglar who's morally ambiguous that comes face to face with someone who is far worse than himself. It has an interesting villain with a seriously twisted motivation. It's essentially answering the question of what would happen if Jigsaw made house calls. If that's a question you want the answer to, then you're in for a treat with this one. The next one on the list is 1922. This one's about a farmer named Wilfred who lives in Nebraska with his wife and teenage son. His wife wants to sell the farm and move to Omaha out of the country, but Wilfred doesn't like that too much. He convinces his son to assist in murdering her, telling him he'll never see his girlfriend again if they end up moving. The pair begin to become delusional as life goes on, unsure of what's reality and what's in their heads. So with this one, we get a good old-fashioned ghost revenge story. Obviously, this one differs from the rest of the movies on this list a little bit because this guy really deserves what's coming for him. So it's a different kind of experience as we see him running from the inevitable rather than rooting for him to make it through this Stephen King story in one piece. It also preys on very simple fears like rats and disease. I absolutely hate rats, so that angle really worked for me. I'm a huge fan of Thomas Jane, and I think he does a great job of playing the conflicted and brooding farmer here. I actually think it's one of the strongest lead performances we've gotten in a Stephen King film in a long time. This one definitely falls more into the slow burn category, but if you're a fan of period piece horror movies, I think you'll find yourself enjoying this one. Next up on the list, we have His House. In this one, a refugee couple makes a harrowing escape from a war-torn South Sudan, but then struggles to adjust to their new life in an English town with an evil lurking beneath the surface. Now, I've said this time and time again that if a movie is PG-13 and it's able to get under your skin and make you feel uneasy, that it's a very well-crafted horror film. An example I use a lot is Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell, which also had a PG-13 rating. If a horror film can't rely on gore for the sake of gore, it's forced to get much more creative about how it approaches its scares, which is exactly what his house does. These scares are all from perfectly calculated and constructed ambient and atmosphere. And this film has a lot to say and really leaves a lasting impression on you because the plot that the horror is centered around is so deeply rooted in social struggle, grief, and trauma. So much so that I would even recommend non-horror fans to give this one a try. It's films like this that prove that the horror genre is capable of conveying these important issues and problems that the viewer has no experience with and turning them into digestible and powerful messages. Next up on the list is Hong. Aunt. This one's set on Halloween night and follows a group of college friends who end up attending an extreme haunted house attraction that promises to feed on their wildest fears. The night turns deadly as they come to the horrifying realization that some nightmares are real. So obviously, this one doesn't give us that fresh and unique of a premise. We've seen tons of films showing a group of friends going into a haunted house attraction on Halloween and it ending up being real. Keeping that in mind, this movie knows that's the case. So in order to stand out, it doubles down on the gore, the traps, and the weird. You can see a lot of the key moments coming from a mile away, but they don't disappoint due to how over the top they are. The writers and directors of this one are actually the duo that wrote A Quiet Place, so they know a thing or two about tension and thrills. Haunt is a lot less smart and nuanced than A Quiet Place, but the skills still transfer over to this one and makes it much more than just your run-of-the-mill murder house type of movie. Don't go into this one expecting too much of a story, but if you're looking for a mindless and entertaining bloodbath of a horror film, you could do a lot worse than Haunt. The next movie we're gonna talk about is Raw. This is a French horror film that follows a vegetarian named Justine, who encounters an unexpected and seductive world her first week at veterinary school. She's a little bit of a loner and desperate to fit in, so she gets peer pressured into eating raw meat during some kind of a hazing ceremony. After that happens, Justine 
Christine soon experiences unexpected consequences and cravings as her true self begins to emerge. I cannot say enough good things about this film. This movie might end up being the most well-known of this list, but seeing as I think it's one of the best horror movies of the last decade, I still think it is severely underwatched. The script and the performances combine to catch lightning in a bottle with this movie. As I'm sure you can expect, there's a lot of body horror in this one, so if you're a fan of someone like David Cronenberg, then I don't see how you don't go absolutely nuts for this one. It's gross, it's messy, and it is wildly entertaining. It truly doesn't let up for the entirety of its runtime, and the second the credits started to roll, I wanted to watch it again. This is one of those horror movies where the word horror is used very loosely. This movie isn't really scary by any means, but it uses very intense and taboo imagery to get its point across in a very effective way. If there's one movie that you watch from this list, make sure that it's raw. Next up on the list is Possessor. This one follows an agent who works for a secretive organization that uses brain implant technology to take control of other people's bodies, ultimately forcing them to commit assassinations for high paying clients. But this time around, the agent is having a tough time of controlling the body of her current host. Even with who's behind this one, I still feel like it fell by the wayside a bit. David Cronenberg is one of the founding fathers of modern body horror, so you'd think that a film done by his son, Brandon, would garner a little bit more attention. I think it got overlooked because it released during the pandemic and a lot of movies were hitting the internet at that time, but this is not one you want to miss. This one is much more of a psychological and science fiction type of horror movie. Think of a more messed up and bloody ex machina. That's kind of the vibe going on in this one. The cast is incredible in this one, with Andrea Riseborough, Jennifer Jason Lee, Sean Bean, and Christopher Abbott. Christopher Abbott was insane in this movie. He was so wild and unhinged that I actually really want to see him cast as the new Wolverine. From front to back, this one is an absolutely messed up, high stakes thrill ride. And if you want to get the blood pumping a little bit, you should definitely throw this one on your watch list. Last, but definitely not least, we have The Night House. This one is about a widow who discovers a dark secret about the house her recently deceased architect husband just built for them. This might be one of the ones you've heard of already, but this was my favorite horror movie of 2021. This is one of those horror movies that'll keep you guessing throughout the first hour of its runtime, which kind of comes with the whole supernatural and demonic territory, and then something will happen that'll loosely give you an idea of what's really going on here. And this isn't one where you need all of the answers to have fun with it, which makes it a blast discussing it with other people because it's interpreted in so many different ways. This movie is kind of a slow burn too because it plays out like a mystery that's being unfolded, but it definitely has its fair share of shocking moments and extremely well-earned jump scares throughout. Even though it's not always outwardly scary, it always gives off that creepy vibe like you're watching something that you're not supposed to be seeing. I saw this one in a pretty empty theater and it definitely made my skin crawl a little bit. I need Rebecca Hall in more horror movies, and I can't wait to see the director David Bruckner's reboot of Hellraiser. So that ends my list of the best horror movies you haven't seen. Probably. Hopefully I was able to throw a few at you that you haven't checked out yet, because there are so many good movies that fall at the wayside, especially in the horror genre. I fall victim to this a lot myself, so if there are any good ones you don't think are being talked about enough, let me know in the comments below and I'll add it to my watch list. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so I know you enjoy this type of content, and I'll see you guys at the next video.